And welcome to another special edition of Weather and Climate Chat, recording this on Friday, December 16th at around 11 a.m. Monsoon Mike and Dr. Michael Davis. Dr. Davis, welcome back. It's good to be back. Seems like we just talked to you yesterday. I think we did. That's that's because we did. (laughs) And the main topic, of course, being uh, the pending wintry event coming uh, tomorrow, the 17th. uh, Saturday, um, and a lot of interesting events going on uh, around the region, and so a lot of people have been asking about the weather. And uh, well, you know, no, we're not copping out here, but based on what we said yesterday, there's not been a whole lot of change in our thoughts, right? Yeah, the models have been showing uh, almost remarkably amount of consistency mm-hmm. between runs. So it seems like they have a generally good trend on how to handle the storm. Okay. So let's break it down. Uh, today, you know, we, it's kind of like a, a milky sunshine. It's, you know, sun through some altos, alto stratus clouds. I was just about to say alto stratus. Good yeah. job. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they'll, they'll slowly lower and thicken as the day goes on. And uh, precipitation moves in tonight. Uh, around what time, Dr. Davis? Uh, it was looking about midnight or so. Midnight, 1 a.m. ish, somewhere around there. Yeah, and that's going to be all snow at that point. Yeah, and for anybody traveling, that it should be all snow pretty much region wide, uh, even as far south as you know Philly, and even you know further south from there mm-hmm. for a while. Pretty much most of the eastern Pennsylvania, southern Pennsylvania will be having more in the way of snow. Right. Now, and of course, north, too. <laughs> right, absolutely. Now, the the tricky part, though, is we have a storm that's going to be moving to our west, so there's going to be warm air that's going to be filtering in rather rather quickly from the south, so we're going to see a changeover. Areas like the Delmarva, South Jersey, Philadelphia are going to switch probably down there before dawn, I would think. Mm-hmm. Uh, but in our area, it's going to be a little bit trickier. Tell us about that. Okay, so with this storm system that's coming in from the west, It's a pretty much classic, what we call a mid-latitude cyclone, right? where you have a cold front and a warm front attached to a low-pressure system, and you have a very distinct cold pocket of air, cold sector, if you will, and a warm sector. And the warm front, which is generally going to be on the eastern side here in the northern hemisphere, is going to be moving northward. And as it moves northward, it should be impacting our area right around daybreak on Saturday. But because the warmer air is less dense than the uh, cold air, it's going to go up and over. And as a result, you're going to have more in the way of warmer air aloft, which can then create more in the way of uh, precipitation in the form of liquid versus, say, frozen, like snow or whatnot. And as the liquid rain falls through, the warm layer, it will eventually come in contact with the cold layer. And then depending on the depth of that cold layer is when you're going to get your sleet or ice pellets versus freezing rain. That's always the tricky part is figuring out between those two forms of ice. So we start as snow everywhere. We, tra- we, we transition. Uh, what time do we transition to the icy stuff, do you think? That's been looking like 6 or 7 a.m. to me. 6 or 7 a.m., I would agree. Uh, what form of ice do we transition to first? Uh, sleet, probably, at first? Probably a brief period of sleet, okay. but I think the majority of it for the southeastern part of the state is going to be uh, freezing rain. Okay. That's because, you know, you have the, uh, you know, got that warm layer above, and then it, it, you know, kind of hits that shallow layer of cold near the surface that's still going to be below freezing at that point. Yes. And the other problem we have is the topography right. here in eastern and southeastern Pennsylvania, where you have all these valleys. You got lots of little spots so that cold air can get all trapped. All that cold air could yeah. be trapped in the valleys. So you're creating that cold pool right at the surface. So the rain that might fall when it transitions to more of a liquid is going to encounter that cold layer and then freeze. So in one of these situations, you can have somebody who's in more of like an urbanized area, like in Allentown or Reading, where it might not be that bad, but then you get out into the hills and valleys of Berks County and things could be a little bit different. Yes, it very well could be, depending on how much of a terrain difference you encounter on the way to, say, Kutztown or wherever you might be going this uh, weekend or coming from very good uh and then we uh you know so that that becomes an issue so icing becomes an issue throughout you know saturday morning it looks like we eventually do get warm enough uh, we get over freezing and uh, we get some plain rain eventually yes and that should happen um late morning early afternoon the models look like they might be speeding up the time of the rain to about 11 or 12 mm-hmm. so 
Now, also, the other caveat with that whole thing is uh, it looks like there could be a period tomorrow, namely tomorrow afternoon, where the precipitation just turns off for a while. Yes, yeah. and yesterday we saw what was termed the dry slot, where right. you have that drier air trying to come in. That was more late afternoon, early evening. I think we saw somewhere on the lines of 4, 5, 6 p.m. Right. models. But now it seems like it's starting to get earlier in the day, mm -hmm. closer to, say, noon, maybe 1 p.m., where we start to see the dry air start to infiltrate the area. So in which case that could shut down some of the actual precipitation. So could that be a trend that things might be moving a little earlier? And you know, Models could do that, yes. Okay, okay. Or um, they could move it back, <laughs> too. Could move it back as well, too. Okay. And then uh, looking farther ahead, it looks like, uh, you know, Sunday, I was looking that uh, Sunday could be one of those crazy situations where we have our high temperature very early in the day. Yes. Uh, in fact, I even heard one, uh, AccuWeather on WEEU in Reading going as bold to say that Sunday could be a high of 55 early in the day. That's being aggressive. Yeah, I think that's a little <laughs> aggressive, but that's uh, followed by a potential flash freeze at night. <laughs> yes, because yeah. on the backside of this mid-latitude cyclone is the cold front. Right. And that guy is going to be passing through... Sunday morning. Late so, late morning, yep. And then temperatures will drop back into the 20s, 30s. So, and then all that liquid rain could potentially flash freeze into ice very quickly. So uh, I would say, so if we had to boil down times that you would, you know, because this is a big weekend, a lot of people have a lot of events going on and shopping and all that stuff. I would say, and see if you agree with me, the more challenging, that's the way we'll put it, the more challenging times to travel would be tonight after midnight up until... You know, the late morning hours tomorrow, Saturday, and then potentially again later Sunday after that cold front comes through and things flash freeze. In between there might be kind of a window where things aren't as bad. Yes, I would okay. agree with that. Okay. All right. So any other thoughts? Uh, I mean, yesterday we mentioned that the storm, you know, it, it, this, and we have to admit, this isn't the, the juiciest, most dynamic storm that we've ever seen. You know, there's not a whole right, lot of precipitation. Yeah. It's not like it's an all-out nor'easter or anything. Have we seen any changes with that, either more juicy, less juicy in the past uh, couple of runs, or are we pretty much staying status quo? Yeah, I think it's staying pretty much status quo. We got a lot in the way of uh, southerly winds associated with the warm front that's going to be bringing up a lot of that moisture and warmth. So that's going to help uh, trigger more precipitation and potentially lead to more in the way of liquid rain when that warm air finally decides to come in because the winds are going to be – going about 30, 40 miles per mm -hmm. hour, just about a mile up. So yeah. that's going to be coming in pretty fast. Right. And the upper level dynamics are still not ideal for this situation. So it looks like it's going to be more of a low level event, which you're going to have a lot more in the way of the moistures, probably within the first mile or two of the surface being impacted. Okay. And when we start looking at the dry slot that we've been talking about, you want to look at that level about one mile up, which is known as the 850 millibar chart. Right, right. And that's where you start to see that drier air coming in. Right. So you can think, okay, if we get more dry air coming in, you should be reducing the amount of precipitation you're going to receive. Okay. All right. Well, I think that we pretty much said all that we can say about this. Uh, obviously, as in situations like this, they're very fluid. Things are subject to change. <laughs> so uh, are you going to be posting about the storm as it happens uh, on, on Facebook? Uh, I will be posting later today, okay. and I'll be posting probably this evening. Okay, and probably the same for me. So you are on, on Facebook. What's your name again? Dr. Michael Davis WX. WX, <laughs> getting that weather abbreviation there, mm -hmm. and Monsoon Mike's Weather Headquarters will both be at it and trying to give you updates on the fly. Uh, probably both, both of us this evening, and then uh, I'm sure... If, Tomorrow morning, I'll be around as well, too, somewhere. So. Is uh, Stormwatch Sal going to help out? <laughs> oh, yeah, he always helps out. He's he's much more of a night owl than I am. <laughs> he'll, he'll be the, I'll be sleeping at 3 a.m., and he'll be up, you know. you know. So he'll be doing the graveyard shift. He'll be doing he, 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 takes, he takes the graveyard shift. You don't have an associate, do you? No, I don't. <laughs> okay. Unless you want to give Rossby the weather cat that job. Yeah, but, Rossby will probably be sleeping. <laughs> he'll be sleeping, too. Okay. All right. So there you have it, folks. Uh, you know, Have a safe weekend, everyone. Like I said, it's an important weekend. We'll be back sometime time next week and we'll give you a preview of uh, christmas and, and new year's hopefully yeah the holiday season is upon us so yep. people want to know about what the weather is going to be producing for yep. their events
All right. So uh, happy holidays, everyone. A little early, and uh, uh, best wishes to all the, the graduates this this weekend at Kutztown University, graduating a class. And uh, we wish everybody the best. A special shout out to my student researcher of three years, Shana Rose, that will be graduating on Saturday. Congratulations. Very good. All right. Are you going to be at the uh, the graduation? I will be there. Yes. Okay. All right. All right. We'll I'll talk to you next week, Dr. Davis. Sounds good. Okay.